I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone, but that's my cat snoring. Frank snores sometimes when he sleeps. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll try not to bust out laughing while I'm recording the video, but if I do, that's why. Don't worry, he usually sleeps right, sleeps right through it. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are with the final chapter. I know what you're thinking, finally, thank goodness, right? Anyway, yes, the final chapter of my saga, no, series. Saga makes it sound kind of tedious, but no, uh, Noah and Alyssa's visit out here to Oregon, which I have commemorated in these uh, five, four, four or five videos, I've, I've lost count. But yes, it was anything but tedious. It was so wonderful and fun. I only wish it had lasted longer, but, uh, you know, better a short visit from them than no visit at all, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, uh, this will be a relatively short video. This will be the, what, third haul video in the series. And here I'll be talking about the CDs that I picked up on my last day in Portland, my, my solo day in Portland, as well as the books that I picked up uh, at both of the PALs that I went to. I went to one on that final day in Portland and another one earlier. I just didn't talk about my books in the hall that we were... Uh, no, and I did in the hotel room that night. So yes, I thought I would uh, break this up into three segments, I'd do half of my CDs, then talk about the books, and then the other half of my CDs, uh, roughly divided into the stores that I got them from, kind of, sort of, anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first one off here is we're going to start with some a little bit of jazz and new age. We've got Andreas Volenweider with Behind the Gardens, Behind the Wall, Under the Tree. This is, I believe, his major label debut album. And I probably wouldn't have got this one uh, except in one of my bargain bag videos, I believe it was, uh, I had an Andreas Volenweider CD and tried it out and kind of liked it. So I thought I would uh, dip a little bit further into his stuff. So we'll see how that was. Yes, I have not had time to listen to any of these yet. So uh, there will be no commentary on, on what they were like. Um, this next one is a jazz group called Four Play. And this is their third album, Elixir. I got their first, I can't remember if it was their first album or their first two albums, uh, I inherited from my sister in her uh, CD collection. So I enjoyed those, and so I thought I would... Uh, it's actually been quite a while since I've uh, thought about foreplay, and I finally decided, eh, what the heck, pick up their third album and see what it's like. Then we have one, uh, this actually is another artist that was in my sister's collection, Mandy Patinkin. He's uh, obviously an, an actor as much as he is a singer and a Broadway star. Uh, this is his album called Experiment, and it is made up, I think it's got a fair number of show tunes as well as some other songs that aren't necessarily show tunes, I guess, which may be why, uh, why he chose the name of the album to be Experiment. And maybe he's broadening his uh, repertoire, I guess, maybe. So that should be interesting. I like Mandy Patinkin's voice. It's a little bit higher register than I normally like my male vocalist, but he's got a great voice, I gotta say. And then um, I've talked about this guy before. I've got his uh, self-titled debut album, and so I found his sophomore and third album at, um, at boy, what, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Everyday Music. That's where I am. Um, well, no, not where I am now, but you know, that's where I got these from. Mark Cohn. Uh, his sophomore album, The Rainy Season, and, no, that's right, yeah, that one was, uh, well, full price. It was a regular price, you see, five dollars but this one was in the 50 cent section, and it was uh, still sealed. Uh, his third album, um, Burning, the, Burning the Days. So yes, decided to uh, expand my Mark Cohn listening. I had his uh, Best Of album for a while, uh, liked it well enough that I picked up his debut and have picked up a few more. Now, this group I have heard of before. Uh, I, I'm sure I've heard of them before, but uh, they didn't seem sound familiar or look familiar when I saw the CD. It was in the Recent Arrivals used CD section, so I decided to pick it up and give it a try. The Friends of Disting Distinction. They are a, a soul group from the 70s, and I thought I would uh, give them a shot. I mean, what better place to start than a Greatest, greatest Hits album? But yes, they do a, um, a version of Hugh Masekela's Grazing in the Grass. <coughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, Love Me or Let Me Be Lonely. I think that's, uh, if that's the song I know, uh, the song I think it is, I've heard it performed by other artists as well. Uh, Ain't No Woman Like the One I've Got. I think I've heard that one before. So yeah, 
Should be an interesting album to listen to. I certainly do not mind 70s soul. I really like that stuff. And now we're getting into some smooth jazz, and uh, we'll end this, end this first segment of the hall with the smooth jazz. Uh, Lee Rittenauer, I have uh, gotten to really like his stuff, so I picked up... I actually bought two of his CDs. One of them I didn't realize I already had. I could have sworn... I, I looked at my Discogs inventory. I've actually inventoried my CDs on, on Discogs, and I looked at it and thought, no, it's not that one that I have. It's a different one. But sure enough, my Discogs in inventory was right, and I picked up the CD I should have passed on, and I passed on the CD I should have picked up. Anyway, uh, on the line is this album by Lee Rittenauer. And so obviously next time I go up to Portland, I'll have to pick that pick uh, that one up. And then, where is... Oh, that's right. I'm only showing one of these because the other two I got at uh, Music Millennium. Uh, the Yellow Jackets is another smooth jazz group that I really enjoy. Picked up their album Shades. Uh, I They first came to my attention because they featured a couple of songs on the soundtrack from Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. And this album was released, uh, oh, the same year as Star Trek IV in 1986. So I picked this one up. So I guess, in a way, very loosely, this album is a companion piece to the Star Trek IV soundtrack. Not really, but that's the way I think of it. And uh, I mentioned in one of the haul videos that you've already seen, uh, hopefully, um, I, I tend to be a little compulsive in my CD shopping. <laughs> Shocker, right? I know. But no. What I mean specifically in terms of compulsive is if I see a big chunk of an artist's discography, that an artist that I'm kind of interested in, I will pick it up impulsively, and, uh, you know, especially if that chunk of the disc discography gets me more than halfway to having their full discography. And so that was the case with this artist here. And bear in mind, life's too short to be a music snob. This artist uh, it has a super cheesy reputation, but, you know, I, I like his stuff on the two-disc essential uh, set that I have, so I thought I would go ahead and take a deep dive, and boy, am I taking a deep dive. I've got like eight or nine of his CDs here. Kenny G. What can I say? Uh, this is his debut album, Self-Titled. And as you can see, most of these were from the $1.99 section. Uh, G-Force. Th this CD was in the $1.99 section, but it had a much more boring cover than the one that was in the regular price section, so I bought that one instead. And then we have Gravity, Duotones, Silhouette, Breathless. I told you I, I'm just going all in on Kenny G. The Moment, and then we have Paradise, and I Am In The Mood For Love. This is uh, the, the most romantic melodies of all time. And there are some CDs in his discography that are missing from this chunk that I have, but I already have those. So I have like the first 12 or 13 uh, releases that uh, Kenny G has put out, and that's that's like two-thirds of, of his discography. I don't think I'm going to go any further than that, but... Uh, Honestly, up to the moment was the um, the moment was the part, portion of his discography that I was most uh, interested in. So, anyway, so I will end the first segment of the haul with Kenny G. We'll go back to the other ones later, but first, uh, as a break from the music, I thought I would talk about uh, the books that I picked up, and I picked up eight books between the two Powell stores. Um, oh, I think all of them but one, I think, were uh, uh, $11.99 or less. So I did pretty pretty well with my money. And yes, they are all music-related books. First we have The Life of a Song. And it's little essays about um, how certain songs came to be. Like, uh, for instance, La Vie en Rose, the, uh, the Edith, P Edith Piaf classic. And then uh, It's the Hard Knock Life, the song from Annie. And I don't know if this is going to talk about the uh, the version from Annie or the one that uh, whatever hip-hop artist uh, sampled it later on. Anyway, so yeah, I thought that was a very interesting book. And that is kind of the, the sort of books that I get are the more browse-worthy rather than read straight through from beginning to end things. So that's me. Maybe one of these days I'll get into an actual uh, front-to-back type book. Uh, this one I almost missed. I saw it on one of the uh, shelves that was apart from the music section. Uh, Pop Science. Serious Answers to Deep Questions Posed in Songs. So, I guess, you know, it's probably more of a science book than a music book, uh, 
but uh, what the heck, give it a try. Uh, so yes, um, if you don't love me now, will you ever? Will you never love me again? As posed by Fleetwood Mac, they do a little analysis of uh, will this, uh, you know, of, of the the scientific or implications of uh, these questions post uh, posed in songs and. What wouldn't Meatloaf do? You know, he'll do everything for, for love, but he won't do that. So, yes. This should be very, very entertaining as well, I think. And then, this one was the most interesting one I saw, and it, it is kind of a front-to-back thing. Uh, you know, read it from front-to-back, but it's a graphic novel. It's about the creation of Showtime at the Apollo, and I guess this was originally done as a, um, you know, a written book, but somebody adapted it as a graphic novel, so I thought that would be quite interesting. It's, it's, it's uh, very uh, word-intensive, you know, there's several panels per page and lots of text to get through, but I think I will enjoy getting through this if and when I eventually uh, get around to reading it. Honestly, supposedly I'm within five years of retiring from my job, so Maybe that's why I'm doing this. I'm stockpiling books uh, so that I will have plenty of stuff to read when, uh, once I'm retired. I hope, anyway. And then we have... This one looked interesting, and this is the one... Oh, no, I paid eleven ninety eight for this one, too? Maybe maybe it's every single book I paid eleven ninety eight for. I thought I paid full price for this one, but... Uh, anyway, listen to this if you love great music. So, yeah. Uh, a critical curation of 100 essential albums. So, yes, some of them... I thought this was geared more toward albums that are a little, a uh, little more unusual, a little less off the, off the beaten path. Um, but they have uh, to, Pimp, "To Pimp a Butterfly" by Kendrick Lamar, and uh, "Lemonade" by Beyonce. Uh, but they also have some some stuff in here that's a little bit more uh, esoteric, uh, like "Who Is William Onyabor" by William Onyabor. I have never listened to him before. Um, Tramp by Sharon Von Etten. So, yeah, this could be an inter interesting uh, book to browse at my leisure. I thought so. And then these next three are, well, they're kind of in a series. The series was rebranded at some point. Uh, the first one that I saw was 30 Second Rock Music. So it's kind of like uh, the 50 key styles, artists, and happenings, each explained in half a minute, is basically the concept of the book. So... You know, if, if I want to know the difference between uh, uh, pre-rock pop with, uh, I don't know, like post-rock or, or whatever, I guess this will kind of explain. It's, it's got, you know, all these little genres and types of music uh, that, that, that the book covers are listed here on the back. So uh, still sealed, so I didn't get to look through it, but it looked interesting. And uh, these other two books, they're not called 32nd. They're called Know It All, but uh, I'll, as I, I will explain, the next one here is Know It All Jazz. There was a book called Thirty Second Jazz, and I looked at that one and this one side by side, same exact content. So obviously, the either the Know It All series was rebranded as the Thirty Second series, or vice versa. So I picked this one up, and as well as Know It All Classical Music. So yes, I have wanted to uh, learn more about classical and jazz. Uh, so I thought, what better way to uh, get a ha get a handle on them than these? And I like series of books, you know, there's something in me, well, series of albums too, you know, like the greatest hits, the different greatest hits um, series that they have going, like the Essential and uh, the Icon series and all those. So I was kind of hoping that they would either have this one as a know-it-all volume in softcover, or both of these as the 32nd volume in hardcover so that they would all truly match, but unfortunately no such luck. But they were all, I mean, the most expensive one here was $9.98, so the other two were $8.98 apiece, so why not? And then this one has a little bit of a morbid uh, connotation to it, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's called One Last Song, and this is uh, Conversations on Life, Death, and Music. And uh, the, most of the book is talks about uh, artists talking about what song they would like to hear uh, if they could pick the last song they hear before they die. They talk about that song. So, uh, 
And there are other sidebars in here about, you know, different uh, other various musings on music and death uh, and, you know, end of life and what have you and stuff. So I thought this was an interesting one. I mean, I've, I have started to, I, I don't dwell on the fact that I'm not going to be around forever, but, you know, being in my 50s now, I've started think, thinking about it a little bit. So uh, maybe reading this will, I don't know, put my mind at ease or help me uh, uh, not think of the subject as being so morbid, maybe. But then again, it's just it's also a, a read just for fun anyway. So, so yeah, a nice little selection of books. And yeah, as I said, the most expensive one in this stack was eleven ninety eight. So uh, I think I did pretty well with regard to the books at uh, the Powell stores. When will I get around to reading them? Who knows. Anyway, on to the second, uh, the second half. Actually, it's a little less than a half of my CD haul from my last day in Portland. Uh, I mentioned in uh, my first, yeah, I believe the, the first video of the series where I talked about the CDs that Noah brought me as a gift uh, at the beginning. Uh, there was a CD by an artist that I didn't realize was uh, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, Todd Snyder. I found his sophomore album in the 50 cent bin, Step Right Up. So I picked that one up. Not having heard his first album yet, so I guess I guess you could say I have well, confidence that maybe I will enjoy Todd Snyder. And then here is another sealed CD. I found two or three CDs that were still sealed. Uh, Brian Adams Unplugged. I've got several of the Unplugged vo uh, volumes uh, so far, kind of uh, picking them up kind of as I see them, developing a collection, I guess. So, And I really like Brian Adams' uh, classic hits, uh, as it is, so I thought I'd uh, really enjoy adding that to my collection. And another artist that uh, I talked about in previous videos, I think this was the the Portland Hall video uh, the other day, an artist I have uh, been collecting, I managed to develop an even further collection of their discography uh, after that video, Sloan. I picked up another four of their albums. Uh, this is Navy Blues, as well as uh, Between the Bridges, and never hear the end of it, as well as Parallel Play. So uh, now I have, what's that, 10? I have 10 of their albums, I think. So yes, I am very much looking forward to hearing them all uh, in due course. And uh, all of these that I've talked about up until now, including this one here, I bought at um, Everyday Music. So yes, the, the haul from... Uh, my second trip to uh, Music Millennium was less than I expected, but anyway, in my May the Fours Be With You video I, I showed a couple weeks ago, I was talking about how uh, there were a couple of sets of four CDs that I bought off the bargain section at Skips, and they were just the CDs in individual jewel cases. They didn't have the original book and whatever that the box set uh, that came with the box set, and I would keep an eye out for those uh, if they ever happened along. Well, one of them did. And actually, this was not the full-sized, you know, long box form of the box set, but this was the shelf-sized version. Uh, 40 Years, The Artistry of Tony Bennett. Found it for seven bucks, and it's got the book with it as well, and uh, the compact case. So I'll be able to actually shrink the amount of shelf space that those other four CDs take up. So yes, I was very happy to see this. Unfortunately, I haven't found the Johnny Mathis uh, set yet. And then, uh, oh, also Tony Bennett, uh, uh, here continuing on to the Music Millennium side, and it didn't even occur to me that this is also a Tony Bennett CD, found this at Music Millennium Viva Duets. This was done um, while he was doing those two big duets albums in the early 2000s, mid-2000s. And so this is a duets album with Latin artists that uh, I decided to pick up and thought I would enjoy. Did not enjoy Latin music very much back when his duets albums originally came out, so I pa I passed on that one at first. And then um, an artist that you saw a few minutes ago, The Yellow Jackets, I picked up another couple of their albums here, Politics, as well as Four Corners. So yes, uh, developing a bit of a... I actually have a few Yellow Jackets albums on vinyl, their first two or three, and I've got a few of them on CD as well. Now this one, <laughs> I actually just picked up this... Uh, the domestic version of this CD at House of Records, but when they have the Japanese version for $7.99, and it originally goes for like 40 bucks, 
I'm not going to pass it up. Plus, it's actually in a jewel case as opposed to a digipack. This is Jeff Goldblum with his sophomore album, uh, I Shouldn't Be Telling You This. And uh, so, yeah, $7.99, I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And the beauty of, beauty of that is I can go ahead and turn around and resell the digipack version back to House of Records. I won't get back everything I paid for it originally, but what the heck. And um, hooray for graphic designers. They put yellow text on a very, very pale blue background. What were they thinking? Anyway, hopefully somewhere on the booklet inside, the names of the songs are shown as well. So, so I don't have to uh, you know, go with not knowing what the song titles are. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and this one, I picked up another Lee Rittenauer CD. Oh, actually, this is the one that I told you about that I... I thought my Discogs inventory was wrong, and I picked this one up when I should have passed on it and picked up the other one. Portrait. I already had it, so I guess I will just turn around and sell this one to one of the local stores. And then the very last CD I picked up was actually not at Music Millennium, because I was there before it came out. I actually picked this CD up at a Barnes & Noble. There's actually a Barnes & Noble at Cascade Station, which is a shopping center uh, right across from the hotel that we were staying at. And uh, they must have just recently put in the Barnes & Noble because it wasn't there the last time I was there. And uh, so, yes, on the day that I was leaving for uh, leaving town to come back home to Eugene, I had time to stop in and poke around at the Barnes & Noble. And they had the Foo Fighters' new album. Uh, uh, but but Here We Are is the name of it. And yes, that's actually the front of it. I was showing the back of it. So, yes, I had to pick that up. I'm a pretty good, uh, pretty healthy Foo Fighters fan. Not a huge fan, but I am definitely was definitely waiting for this album to come out. So yes, finally have it, and uh, I will soon be breaking the seal and listening to it, as is the case with all these other CDs. <laughs> Eventually, I don't know how many weeks or months or years it will take me to get through this. Uh... <laughs> yes, I already had a big backlog of CD listening, and now I guess it's just it's even bigger. So. First world problems, right? Anyway, that, I guess, is... Uh, that'll do it for my wrap-up haul for vacation spring-summer of 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the descri description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos if you haven't yet. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.